Hello students, welcome to Somati Solutions. My name is Somnath Mukhopadhyay and today we are going to discuss about one of the very important aspects of object oriented technology that is called callback mechanism. Callback mechanism is a mechanism in which we pass a function pointer to a specific code from where our handler will be called when a specific event occurs. So this is simple this is a simple version of callback mechanism now let me tell you the reason why we need a callback mechanism i am giving you a practical scenario where you know you will find it yourself that we need callback mechanism to do certain kind of work for example suppose there is some data coming into the communication port now there are two ways through which we can find out if the data has come to the communication port or not. Number one process is our system should pull the communication port every with a particular interval to see whether the data has arrived or not. For example, suppose the communication port data is coming every five seconds. So our we need to develop a system where our process will pull the communication port every one second to see if the data has arrived or not. This is known as polling mechanism. Now there is a problem in the polling mechanism. What is that problem? So as I, as in, as I said, the data is coming every five seconds to the communication port and we are polling the communication port every one second. That means if we poll the communication port every one second, then four polling will be missed and at last in the fifth polling only we will get the data necessary data in the communication port so that means this is a considerable amount of loss in cpu time cpu cycle or cpu time that is not desirable in this case we need a we need a mechanism called callback mechanism so what 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 do we have to do we have to we have to develop a system in which we won't pull the communication port. Instead, whenever the data will come to the communication port, it will let us know that the data has arrived and we will then pick up the data from, from there and do whatever we want to do. This is, this is what the callback mechanism it becomes very handy uh, to develop such kind of system. So yeah, so you so you have learnt polling mechanism and callback mechanism and where to use what, right? I mean, why callback mechanism is you know superior to polling mechanism. So now let us develop some real life Java code so that we can understand the callback mechanism, how these things are done in the real pure Java code. In earlier version, like in in earlier days when in everything used to be done using C, this callback mechanism was done using a, using a concept called function pointer. But after the arrival of object oriented technology like C++ and Java, this callback mechanism is done a little different in a little different way. And we are going to see that mechanism. So I'm going to develop a simulate a callback mechanism kind of system using java code okay so let's do that and i hope you will enjoy this okay so let me open the eclipse box page so this is the this is this is the this is the project called callback i have created now now i will add code into this okay now there are there are in while developing the callback you know project the first thing we need we need a we need an interface maybe we can give it maybe a callback okay so let's let's add that interface to the source code so new interface and then we will give it a name called callback we'll finish it off callback will have only one function only one single function void notify caller and that's it 
so callback will have only one function that's called notify caller okay now there are two other classes that i will add here one is the caller class and the other is the callee class the caller class will call the callee class and then whenever the callee class will do some background task it will basically notify the caller class that i am done with my callee uh, work you do you take the data and do whatever you want to do this is the basic principle of callback mechanism right so they, let's add two more classes one is the caller class and the other is the callee class okay new class so first i will develop the callee class first i will develop the callee class and then i need another class called caller class caller class okay so 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 let's develop the callee class first so in the callee class we will have a private callback interface let's name it cb and then we will have a normal one argument constructor we will create and we will pass the callback cb and this is the simple one this dot cb plus c okay so we are passing the reference to uh, the interface callback okay and then then this is the this is where mm, the task will be executed okay these are the this is this is these these tasks are mainly done in a background thing and these are known as asynchronous tasks so these this kind of task task are usually are usually done in a background thread and is called an async task or async or async rather async asynchronous task okay asynchronous task okay so let us develop a method say for example void public void do asynchronous task to asynchronous task so what we will do in the beginning of the asynchronous task we can do as this is mere simulation so there won't be the actual task but the task may be something like that you know downloading an image from an internet server this is the this could be the real task okay from here for the simplicity i'm simply doing printing some messages and i will put a put a delay i'll sleep i'll make the thread sleep for a certain moment of time which will basically imply that the task is going on you know during that period okay so system dot out dot print ln print ln so what do you need to print ln <coughs> i am starting the asynchronous task okay i'm starting the asynchronous star and then what it will do it will actually say dot sleep say dot sleep and let's do it say ten thousand okay or maybe say twenty thousand so twenty thousand means it is basically twenty second okay so what it will what we need to do we need to put it in the try clutch block we need to put in a try catch block and we need to put it in a try catch block and then once so this this is basically a simulation that the background task is happening in the background okay going on in the background so which is basically here we are simulating that it will take a 20 second time say for example suppose you are downloading an image from an internet so which may take 20 second time depending on the internet speed and the size of the email right so once this is over now the important part now here it will take the cb dot 
notify it will simply do the notify caller okay it will call the notify caller okay and then what it will do it will system dot out dot println println i am done with the, i'm done with the asynchronous task okay I'm done with the asynchronous task, okay? And then what I will do, I'll do control X and here instead of this, here we put it here, okay? I'm done with the con asynchronous task, okay? So, so here actually callback mechanism is not saved, so CB dot notify caller, okay? This is done. Now, let's concentrate on the caller class so caller class let's have a let's have a callie callie class is equal to new callie and then we will pass the caller class in these parameters new what is happening call it less okay this is because caller class will have to have to implement implement it will implement the callback mechanism implement the callback interface and then one this is this 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 does the this this does the implement callback implementing callback then then actually it will have to override the interface method so that's 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 it that it is that's it is doing here then we will have the this function and then we will have a public void call as in touch of Kali and then it will do what it will do it will simply do a Kali dot do a synchronous touch and that's it and then then the thing is that Kali will do the asynchronous task back in the background thread whenever the Kali finishes doing the task it will see it will notify the caller okay the caller will get the notification here caller will get the notification here and then what it will do it will get the take the data from the call it said or call its process and then do whatever it wants to do okay so here because it's a simulation so it is system route dot print ln print ln it will simply do thank you Kali for executing my task okay thank you Kali thank you Kali for executing my task okay this is the simple print out this thing okay and then it will now I will take the data and then it will again do control C and it will do do something control V now I will take the data and process okay all right so this is this is how the once the notification comes that once the callie finishes its asynchronous task in the background then it will notify the caller and once the caller uh, you know gets this notification it will simply do something do some of the processing of the of the data whatever callie has done and then it will you know and then it will execute that part whatever it whatever processing it wants to do on the call is the data okay that has been downloaded or that has been you know that has been got by the callie in a background system okay so this is this is this is the whole thing this is how the whole thing this is remember this is just a simulation of you know callback mechanism 
how this is done in the Java. So let let's develop the main class. In the main class, what we will do? Caller caller is equal to new new caller caller is, caller is equal to new caller, and then we simply call caller dot call asynchronous task of quality. Okay, this much we have to do, and then let's see what is going on. Okay, so I'm running this program. So this is so this is this is how I am starting the asynchronous task. Then it is waiting, waiting, waiting to finish the asynchronous task. So we have given a thread sleep by 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, the colleague will finish its task, and then it will show that. Uh, you know, it will notify the caller. Uh, see, after 20 seconds, the caller has got the notification, and then it will take the data and then do whatever processing it wants to do. So, there is a spelling mistake in the call class. So, asynchronous star, asynchronous star, all right, and then I am so I am just you know running it once again with the correct spelling so that I am starting the asynchronous star, then it will waiting the waiting for the callee to finish it off so in the meantime remember in the meantime the caller is functioning normally so all other functions in the caller is happening normally because this mainly this asynchronous task is mainly done in a background that's that's the reason so this asynchronous task is usually done in a background thread so as the background thread is processing the call asynchronous task the other task of the callee is happening Parallelly, okay. There is no interruption in the call is in processing, so there is no loss of CPU cycle. Whenever the background set finishes, the call finishes the asynchronous task, it basically notifies the caller that I have I'm done with my asynchronous task. You get the data and do the processing. So that's it for today's session. Hopefully, you have learned the, the one of the most important issues of uh, object oriented technology called callback mechanism and later i will discuss a more generic version of callback mechanism that is the event listener pattern and i will also discuss something about a, a design pattern presented in the gang of four book or observer pattern and i will also tell you the difference between asynchronous sorry event listener pattern and the uh, observer pattern event listener pattern is the most generic version of this callback mechanism uh, callback mechanism and observer pattern is a little different although they they, they can be termed similar they, they are very similar a little bit different and i will discuss all these things in the next lecture thank you for listening to it bye